What is going on guys? It's Shu here bringing you a, another review slash reaction on Dragon Ball Super. We're back at it with the movie still and I gotta say we're getting to the good stuff. We're, we're slowly getting there and of course a few little new things that they're bringing on that I'm enjoying as well. So definitely liking the manga version a bit more than I did with the movie but that's just kind of a general thing. But guys, before I continue, please make sure to make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good jazz. It helps out tremendously, and the support that you guys give means the world to me as we're trying to continue to grow in this community. It would mean the world if you guys would join, if you haven't already, and let me know what you guys think. I always love to know what you guys are thinking about in comments, all that good jazz. Let me know down below. But without further ado, let's get into it. So... We start this chapter off with seeing the police department basically giving Krillin a rundown of what's happening. I love that Krillin is actually trying to live an ordinary life, and we're seeing more of him here. We also get to see Marin actually grown up, something that we hadn't seen very much of with, with regards to Dragon Ball. And I, I, honestly, I can't remember other than like maybe what we saw of her briefly in GT where you know she obviously doesn't have any powers but she's you know just living a regular life and then we're watching a movie and i love the fact that 18 got jealous over krillin's boss and him being all secretive when honestly krillin has no reason to be secretive like dude he you are one of the strongest humans on the planet you don't have to be like oh no you know i gotta run over here and take this phone call like dude just do it you know just answer the phone answer the call whatever but i love how 18's like uh-huh sure she is i'm tagging along just to find out we had never and i'm saying this now i don't think i've ever seen 18 get slightly jealous or concerned when it comes to krillin and other women not that he's ever given her a reason so i think that was actually quite fun to see so that's how we see Krillin and 18 kind of joining in. And I love it. It gives a little more of a context to the, how they're part of all this. Again, I love seeing that. But we move on to the fight where we see Gohan finally getting serious during his fight. He actually is pretty much, you know, dominating. But we see that with Gamma 1, you know, he's quite serious. I love the mental conflict that we saw in the movie and here, obviously. Seeing it in the movie, obviously, we can actually visually see it and actually hear it as well. How, like, they feel, or Gohan and Piccolo feel like they're not even bad. That they're actually just misguided. Not because of Dr. Hato, because we know he's actually not that bad of a dude either. It's just that with the leader of the Red Ribbon is what's given them this false information. And I like that. The fight in itself, it was good. I actually like seeing some of these panels. It was great. Obviously in the movie it was done differently, but like I really enjoyed seeing that that way. Like it was just really cool. Some of the hits that they were giving each other. And Piccolo, of course, surprising the hell out of Gohan saying, oh, I didn't even know you were here. Like Gohan is just so unattached when it comes to when he's not fighting, like when it, like his he's not awoke he's not woke it's just the truth of the matter and it's frustrating because gohan's my favorite character aside from like a few others but mostly gohan and like definitely seeing gohan this way just really upset me but i'm glad that he did take things seriously when it came to pan and him going and snapping out of that but of course they're human they're having exhaustion well they're organic let's put it this way they're organic beings and they're gonna get tired and this is what we start to see with piccolo he actually starts to start feeling fatigued gohan as well they're not gonna be able to continue for much longer and it, it sucks you know it's just the way things are and to know that they're on, that the droids are only at about 82 percent it just shows you the difference in where they're at when it comes to that regard they could have gone on for a long time i honestly would want to see them not like what we saw in the movie but like see how long they can go without having to like replenish because that's something that i would have loved to have seen but that's just no here no there that's just more my thoughts but after piccolo get basically gets dominated here and knocked down by both gamma one and two we see that he actually decides to 
like well not him decide we see that shenron actually kind of kicks in that extra little i guess you could say a thing that he had promised him and we see piccolo awaken the orange form and i i love this form i hate that it took so long for piccolo to have some kind of a transformation such as this it almost feels like he's like the legendary namekian which is awesome i i really love this new look for him when i saw it in the movie and obviously when they were just showing this to us he just looks so much more menacing and so much more powerful i love that and one of the reasons why I really want Dragon Ball to return is to see more of this, to see this transformation, to see where it compares. I love to see it. But let me know what you guys think. Now that Orange Piccolo is here, what do you guys think? Do you love it now? Do you not? Let me know. As always, though, stay safe, and I'll catch you all later.